but I want to welcome Steve Connolly, who I've known quite a few years now. And uh, he was the founder of the Academy of Life Planning. So he's going to tell us a little bit more about that. And uh, I'm actually su supporting some of the work he's doing. So, yeah, we've been talking regularly. So, Steve, thank you. Welcome for, for doing this for us. Thank you, so, John. Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about your background first? Yeah, OK. So uh, obviously founder of the Academy of Life Planning, which has been going about 10 years now. I think, John. Uh, before that, I was uh, a senior investment professional in the financial industry. I've been a uh, chartered financial planner for about 30 years, um, but I headed up businesses. So uh, headed up, I was head of pensions for what is now Royal London, head of investments for Santander, head of investments for Royal Bank of Scotland Group, head of investments for HSBC, looking after the wealth divisions in the United Kingdom. And that was until I was about 50, which was 10 years ago. So I'm 60 this year, John. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, it was, um, yeah, so it's, you know, 20, uh, 2011, when uh, basically there was a lot going on in the financial industry. The uh, retail distribution in financial services was banning commissions. And uh, a new type of financial advisor needed to emerge in the industry that would be trusted by uh, by the public because uh, financial industry is actually the least trusted of all industries globally believe it or not and it has consistently been so year after year according to the research by a company called Edelman the Edelman Trust Barometer um, so when I was in the banks as head of investments I used to build businesses for the banks and it started out in sort of when I joined the banks that was about 20 or 2000 and I had to build kind of what were relatively small businesses for the banks like 30 billion, 50 billion pound businesses, and they gradually had to get bigger and bigger. So I had to get better at it. Uh, I was only go as good as the current business that I launched, John. Uh, so uh, they said, that was last year, Steve, that you did that business. We didn't need another one this year. And um, in 2011, I thought, well, what we need really is a big trusted financial business, a financial advisor business. So I kind of did some research and found out what was the best model trusted globally. And it was a planning process where you plan the client before you plan the money. I thought, great, well, let's do that then, see how that goes. So I ran a trial, it was really successful. Customers loved it, said it was the best financial conversation they'd had in 25 years. But unbeknown to me, the directors of the banks had all sort of colluded amongst themselves and decided that instead of uh, you know, launching a trusted advisor network, we're actually get rid of all the advisors because um, with interest rates going down the, the, and uh, with the credit, uh, the, the margins they could make on credit cards, on secured lending. They could, you know, take 26% interest on a, uh, a credit card when the interest rates were kind of 0.5%. So it's a huge margin for the bank. Decided that's what they were going to focus on for the next decade. So uh, so I, did, I kind of, I think values are really important, John. And kind of my values clashed with the banks at that point. And I decided either you kind of toe the line and go go with it and put your values in your pocket, back in your pocket, or you follow your heart, follow your values. So that's when I left the banks 10 years ago and I set up what was to be the trusted advisor business model, which was the, and it has become the Academy of Life Planning. Wow. So yes, I think we've all had a taste of uh, banks and we've heard about the financial crisis and the pressure on them and all sorts of things. So yes, it's not surprising to hear that uh, it wasn't necessarily the best environment uh, there's no bank managers anymore a lot of the time is there it's hard to get to talk to anybody all that kind of stuff so impossible yeah so yeah. the bank managers had long gone uh, mm -hmm. back in 2011 they, they were kind of young uh, impressionable people who would sell lots of products were put in as bank managers so the old trusted bank manager was a thing of the past and uh, you know ever since then I've been a volunteer ambassador for the transparency task force trying to change uh, through regulation and oversight the uh, the financial services industry globally uh, by trying to get more transparency on what what's actually going on behind the scenes there so i'm combating that in one way as a voluntary basis but i thought there was a bottom-up approach needed where a model needed to appear in the marketplace that people can trust uh, is going to give them the right outcomes that they, they're not getting currently from the market 
So, so how did you find you, you created the Academy of Life Planning? So what, what was that process like? And how long has it taken to create? Yeah, so 2011, I set up as a single one-man band and started doing uh, planning clients before I planned the money. And um, I found that it was quite difficult to operate because the whole, the rest of the industry really, uh, when customers see a financial planner or financial advisor, the first thing they do is roll their eyes back. <laughs> if you say you're a financial advisor or financial planner because they don't trust the person. The second thing they do is they think they're going to be sold a product. And uh, very quickly, I came to see that in order to deliver trust, I didn't just have to plan the client before I planned the money. I had to actually stop selling products. So about eight years ago, that's what I stopped doing. And uh, the plans become very different when you start providing a financial plan with no intention whatsoever or incentive to actually sell a product at the end of it. And uh, that's really what I developed. It's called, a, I call it a non-intermediating financial planning process, bit of a mouthful. But what it means is I'm a financial planner and I don't intermediate uh, between the product providers and the clients uh, because uh, regulated financial advisors are all intermediaries. And that means they hold agency agreements with the product providers. And nine times out of 10, they're paid according to how much product they sell which is a bit of a uh, conflicted remuneration, I think they call it. And they mm. said this is happening globally. But there is a movement, John, going on, uh, not yet in the UK, but it's happening in Australia, happening in India and some other markets where they're actually splitting advice and distribution. So you can't call yourself an advisor if you're getting paid according to how much product you sell. So I think there's a, a wave of change coming. And uh, I want uh, to help people in the UK to be ready for that. So that's why I set up the Academy. But what I have found is because there's a lack of other organizations in the market, people from other countries have been contacting me. And now we have an, a national, an international network of non-intermediating financial planners who've joined the Academy of Life Planning. Mm -hmm. So in very simple terms, I mean, that means you're not taking a commission on what you sell. So you've not got that bias built in, which it, it always makes you, well, you hear horror stories, don't you? Some, some of these guys get paid a lot of money commission when they sell something big. So yeah. that's all, as much as they might try and try to invest, there's obviously they've got to make a living and there's some bias built into that. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I've, so I've sent a couple of people to you, but it's really interesting you say that there's mistrust. So I've actually had one or two people say to me that, they don't like financial advisors yeah and that's actually made them wary of, of coming to you as another basic financial advisor so we it's like we need to educate the whole market that there's something better isn't it yeah so i call myself a financial planner mm. i sell plans not products so hopefully if you next time you mention that to someone just say he's a financial planner he sells plans not products yeah I'm going to sell you some product uh, but you're absolutely right you know the the commission point uh, what happened is in 2013, the uh, British government tried to ban the uh, commission on investment products with the retail distribution review. But all that happened was, uh, it's what we call lobbyist legislation. I think the big product providers, you know, have got uh, deep pockets and, uh, and uh, you know, first-hand access to <laughs> Yeah. So some of the MPs, as we uh, see, little has changed in the last uh, 10 years, but that was the, certainly the case in, back in 2013. And what happened was the legislation got watered down a bit. And although uh, a, a visor now doesn't get commission, they get instead they get um, an upfront initial fee of typically 3% of the investment and an ongoing fee of 1% a year. And it's not called commission, it's called ongoing advisor charges so uh, the commission used to be funnily enough three percent of the <laughs> initial investment and one percent per annum trail commission but it's not called commission now so of course commission has disappeared from the market since 2013 but what does happen is uh, if you went imagine you had a windfall um, uh, from a relative and left you uh, say a hundred thousand pounds and you had an option of paying off your mortgage or putting it in an investment. If you went to see a financial advisor, if they put a hundred thousand pounds into investment and got 3%, they get 3000 pounds and 1000 pound per annum. Mm -hmm. They told you to pay off your mortgage. They get nothing. So what do you think the outcome is going to be? Which one would they choose? And even if it's an unconscious bias, 
Mm -hmm. They are most likely, and there's, the research has suggested this, even if it's an unconscious bias, where that uh, conflicted remuneration exists, they're most likely to recommend the outcome that you invest the money instead of paying down your mortgage. So, so just, just to clarify that then, so even if they've got a really expensive mortgage and it's costing them lots of money, the advisor's still quite likely to say, no, a long-term investment might be better. Obviously, some might, some investors might be better than others, but I presume you've actually seen that happening and, and in the past with people. Yeah, and the more the more they get you to give you their money, the more they get paid. And what, and in fact, <clears throat> two thirds of their total income comes from what they call recurring income. Mm. So what they're doing is what we call asset raking or asset gathering. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'd say there's probably over ninety percent of the advisors out there are still doing this and trying to get assets under management. They call it, so they can yeah. take the one percent fee. If they get a hundred million pounds of assets under management, their income in the practice is a million pounds a year, uh, re day in day out. You know, from first of January, they know they're going to get a million pounds. So all the way through COVID, you know, these businesses have done really well, even though the markets have gone up and down and new business dried up because they're set on these, what we call back books of business where they're taking 1%. So it's yeah, very, yeah. very resilient, but unfortunately it's not aligned to the interests of the consumer. And what happens if you uh, put a wall between advice and product, the advice changes completely. Mm -hmm. So what I say now to a client who um, has money, so they might be not be investable money, it might not be money they can move to an investment, it might be a buy to let property portfolio. Uh, their business might be their asset or their workplace pension scheme, or they might like to run their own assets on what we call a direct to consumer platform, which avoids the advisor charges 1% altogether and then just get access directly. Uh, it doesn't sound like much saving 1%, but over 50 years, that's 50% of your life savings. Uh, you would have been better in your pocket than the advisor's pocket. So it's, it's really important to kind of make that d differentiation. And then what I do, I offer planning for people who haven't got investable assets because they just want to keep the money where it is. And also what I can do is make uh, financial planning available to people who haven't got money. Because nine out of 10 people have less than £100,000 of investable assets. And my plan for them, and financial advisors and financial planners don't do this, but I do this with my system called the game plan, is I show my customers and uh, my members show their customers how to create wealth. So we, we put in place a little business plan because people make wealth, not products. Uh, people make wealth with their business ideas, their entrepreneurial spirit, their... Uh, plans the hard work and that all goes into creating an asset and that asset creates an income and you can drop that into your cash flow forecast and that can plug a gap and make you know that the other people are trying to sell products you're just selling a, a good plan to help people set up a business and put that in their cash flow forecast and make good any shortfalls so that sounds really important then so if somebody's not in a position that they've got cash that will go into products that pay yeah. commission those financial advisors in the old model are not going to be interested in them at all. Correct. Yes. So uh, typically the threshold for regulated financial advisors before they'll see anyone is £100,000 of investable assets. So if they've got £100,000 of property, they won't be interested. £100,000 you know, is the business valuation, won't be interested. £100,000 uh, in their workplace pension scheme, not interested because they won't, can't work out how they're going to get paid. Mm -hmm. If they've got a hundred thousand pound windfall that's sat in the bank account and they're very happy, very quick to make an appointment because they know that's going to help them uh, build up their assets under management. So this is why you can provide a life planning service to far more people or as you, or as you just referred to it, I think, did you say game plan? The game plan, yes. Yeah. So I wanted to differentiate it from financial planning because people have hijacked the term financial planning uh, to cover what they call financial intermediation, which is product selling. And like you say, John, if you were going to refer someone across and say, well, he's got this financial planner, financial advisor. No, he's got to do the game plan. And the game plan is a wealth creation strategy for people who haven't got wealth, which is nine out of 10 people. Those that have got wealth, what I help them to do is identify wealth in every area of their life and help them have a, a holistic, uh, comprehensive life that where they're happy uh, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually and financially. And that's kind of the goal for someone who has wealth. It's also the goal for someone who doesn't have wealth. But what we need to do is put in place a plan to create wealth at the beginning 
for the people who haven't got wealth, nine out of 10. And uh, because I can do that, uh, it doesn't matter whether people have got assets or not, they can just uh, come to me and or one of my members and we'll you know, put in place a plan for the help them to create wealth and uh, make them happy and wealthy in every area of their life. That's, that's the aim of the game plan. Yeah. And from our point of view at Financialization, this ties in really well, of course, because we're trying to effectively help people to understand themselves, to be more productive, to be more effective in their life. But of course, one of the big drains on your life is if you've got financial pressure all the time and you haven't got that financial freedom. So for some, I guess for some people, they might want quite a lot of money. For other people, they just want to have it managed properly so that it's not a constant stress so they can actually be more relaxed and do the things that are important to them. Yeah, so the game plan is again uh, quite different. So I've got two things to say to your answer, John. Okay. First, first of all, is the uh, before you start dreaming about uh, what financial freedom looks like, you need something first before that, which is financial security. Mm -hmm. And until you've got that, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what else we do. If you haven't got financial security, twice as much money is going to make you twice as happy. But when you've got security, twice as much money doesn't make you twice as happy. So we need to get to that stage where you're secure and then we can start planning financial freedom, first of all. The second thing is that the theory of the game plan is based on potentialization. It's based on your potential. So like I say, the planning changes completely. It's nothing like uh, financial advice, financial planning, because they're not really interested in what your goals are. Financial advisors and financial as, as is the old way, their goals is, uh, well, 98% of the population don't have any goals. So when the financial advisors see them, then they give them their goals, which is to get assets into management and to sell as much product and insurance as they possibly can, because that's how they get paid. So that's their goals, not the client's goals. So what happens when you take away that, what are the client's goals? Well, let's ask them, you know, let's plan their life before they plan the money. What we do is we, we go deeper with the client because what, what I want to do is um, a, a game planner is actually a purpose coach. So I don't know if I shared this with you before, John, but then what we do is we identify at the very beginning of the planning processes uh, some things about um, that the client might not be aware of because uh, our clients tend to operate, 90, 98% of clients tend to operate in the level of conscious awareness with the, their thoughts their emotions and their feelings and that, that that we call the ego self and that is that awareness of who they are and uh, many go through life like that and if you try to change it with through personal development programs or anything people are very resistant because they feel it's an attack on their personality um, so we have to do something which uh, technically is called piercing the veil which is actually some soul work uh, we call it now it sounds woo woo but it actually is very very practical and i'll explain why it's very very practical in a moment but what we do is we ask some questions the first questions we ask are about the values of the client so what are your values and your values are what what do you think is important in the world and uh, we kind of make sure we include that and it's going to be about physical things uh, mental things emotional things and spiritual things what i mean by spiritual things is purpose and, and meaning having purpose and meaning in your life um after you know your values then the next thing we ask is what are your talents and what we do with talents um and this depends whether you look at eastern philosophy or western philosophy or whether you look uh, at the practical there's a practical kind of aspect to it as well but talents uh, in Western philosophy, uh, talents are kind of God-given talents and our purpose in life is to use them in service of other people. In Eastern philosophy, funnily enough, our talents are universe, uh, universally given and our purpose is to use them in the service of other people. So it's the same answer whether you get Eastern or Western philosophy. And there's a lot of influence from uh, ancient the theology and philosophy in the game plan. And one of the big influences is actually from Japan. And uh, the, it's actually based a lot on the Shinto philosophy, what's called the natural cycle from creation to manifestation. It's about the cycle of how things happen. And um, in um, Okinawa, which is some islands south of Japan, uh, people live to their 100 and are very happy and live very happy and fulfilled life. And their secret is something called Ikigai which is uh, Japanese for purpose, finding purpose in your life. 
so this is what we're doing with the game plan. We're finding your purpose. And the purpose in the Ikigai is a combination of four things. It's what you're good at, which is your talents, uh, what you love, what you'd love to do, um, what, you, uh, what the world needs, and what you can get paid for. Now, the reason I say this is an optimum strategy, if you imagine if you did what you were good at, what you loved, uh, what the world needed, but you didn't get paid for it, then that's not going to be an optimum strategy for creating wealth because you're not going to get wealthy uh, in the bank account doing that. Um, if you did something that you're good at, you get paid for the world needed, but you don't love it very much, then it's going to be a pretty miserable existence. You're not going to like Mondays. You're not going to be very productive. You're going to look looking forward to Fridays and doing the minimum amount of time as you possibly can. If you do something that you uh, love, the world needs it, you get paid for it, you're not very good at it, suboptimal strategy because it's going to be pretty rubbish the output of that if you do something that you love the world needs to get paid for sorry if you love you're good at it you get paid for but the world doesn't need it then that's not going to be a very successful business model so the icky guy which is a combination of those four things uh which is your uh, it, we we say it's your the physical things emotionally things mental things and spiritual things that combination is actually in practice an optimum strategy for creating wealth. So if I begin the process by knowing what your values are and knowing what your purpose are, then I can uh, really plug into this, uh, pierce the veil, do a bit of soul work and understand what direction you need to face in. Uh, so I call this helping you to, before you begin the planning, face the right direction. Okay. So that's, re that's really what we're doing with that process. And all the other planners I know don't, eat, don't do that. You know, so the game plan is unique and it just checks to say, well, actually, what's your life purpose? What's your direction? Before I start planning, I want to kind of point you in the right direction. Then we use the financial architecture and put that in place to support you on that journey. Now, where it goes wrong with other financial planners is they, do, they, they don't do that. So if you say, say you're working nine to five in a job you're not very happy with, you know, day in, day out, doing the same boring thing. And, you know, you, you, you kind of think you're going to spend 50 years, best part of 50 years on the treadmill of work existence on this bet. You're going to buy yourself happiness in the last 16 years of your life. And then suddenly you're furloughed, you, you know, locked down, you find yourself at home and asking questions, is that something I want to go back to? Um, financial advisor comes along and says, well, you know, I, he, you've not got enough pension. I think you should put your money in a pension. And uh, the client does that and the money's locked away until they're 55. I come along and then say, uh, I, I identify that they're not very happy. And they're going to, you know, I say, well, you could bring your happiness forward to today. You know, we, we can put a business plan of you in place for something that you, you're good at, you love, the world needs and you get paid for. Uh, now, if they've gone ahead with the IFA before me, then they're stuck. They can't do that until they're 55 because the money's now in a pension. They can't have access to it. But if I got in there first, then they could invest in themselves. And uh, it makes a very different outcome for the client. Uh, very, very different outcome. I'm uh, really curious about, yeah. there's four things there. And yeah. there, all the times you've done this with people, I can imagine some people love doing things that perhaps the world doesn't know it needs at the moment. So there must be some kind of reconciliation process about aligning people's ideas and passions with what's practical how, how do you work through those kind of things yeah so it's called a proposition development framework and it's actually what i did at the banks in order to create these multi-million pound businesses and it's simply eight questions that you ask yourself the one is the one about what the world needs it's called the pestle and uh, it's about market drivers it's about what's happening in the world politically economically socially technologically legally and environmentally and is that presenting a threat or an opportunity to your idea? So, for example, at the moment, I'm helping a lot of uh, coaches, uh, business, uh, business coaches, personal coaches, um, who are going to help people with their life and money. Now, what the world needs right now, we're in the middle of the world's worst medical and economic crisis. You know, so a life and money coach is quite an important kind of skill set for the world right now to help people plan their way out to, you know, to recover uh, a road road back to recovery for an individual so that's an example of a something that's happened in the world which is covid 
and uh, the, 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 what then that need generates. Uh, some other things that are happening, just to give you an idea, is during COVID, there's been a huge amount of automation in the marketplace. So uh, artificial intelligence and data processing you know, is, is done by robots now. And I think the, uh, the uh, World Economic Forum have predicted that by 2025, half of the jobs in the world will be done by machines. So he said the machines overtake the people in 2025. Can I just check? Because obviously that process has been happening already. Are you yeah. saying that of, of the jobs that exist now in 2021? Yeah. So they're saying that in the you next five years, yeah, 83 million jobs are going to go. Uh, there's going to be 90 million jobs, new jobs created, but they're different jobs. Yeah. So they, uh, the jobs that are going are things like data crunching you know, uh, accountants jobs, uh, payroll managers, uh, admin assistants, uh, because what's happened is during lockdown and uh, remote working, that's all been done now, automated, you know, people uh, aren't kind of going to see a customer and collecting information, that's all done online, you know, and uh, these people aren't uh, crunching the numbers, that's all done. So uh, at the weekend in the Guardian, you no, know, it was in the Telegraph, sorry, on Saturday, uh, there was a, an announcement from Vanguard, which is uh, the, one of the largest fund managers in the world. I mean, in the UK, they, just to give you an idea, during COVID, they took £10 billion in new business uh, in the last 12 months. And most of that was given to them by financial intermediaries. But what Vanguard allow, announced last week is they've, they're now, they've uh, already take, automated finance, fund managers' jobs and portfolio managers' jobs and taken those away. But what they just announced last week is they've now got an automated financial advisor so wow and uh, they that said sounds what it's scary it is scary because what they've said is uh, so the md for europe uh, sean haggerty said that what it takes a financial advisor to do in 15 hours they can do in 15 seconds the financial advisor for that charge charges 100 pounds an hour typically so that's 1500 pounds they're offering this free so that's no, just, I don't see how the computer can do life planning and understand your dreams. Brilliant. I'm glad you said that. Because yeah. we what call that is humaning up in a digital world. In order what the what the what people need to reskill as is human skills. Because the the, the the robots can't replace that. They can do the analytical stuff. So if you're very money centered or product centered, all that stuff's at risk. If you're very person focused and working out what would a great life be for you, what what would improve your mental well being, your physical well being, your emotional well being, your spiritual well being, your financial well being. Let's work all that out and, and give you some balance in your life and enjoyment and help you not just be, be the best you can be, but make the world a better place for you having lived. Let's do that. And if you haven't got enough money, don't worry, we're going to put in a plan and create, to create it, you know, with the wealth creation strategy. Now, all that stuff is human centered. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone said, OK, well, I'm going to do all that. And where shall I put the money in the meantime? That's money centered. And what you can do now is uh, in 15 seconds, set up something and avoid all that. You know, someone taking half your life savings is just not necessary anymore. It's what we call commoditization of the market. So investment funds, investment uh, management, and now financial advice, and even uh, fund analysts, their jobs have been automated as well. Morningstar have automated the fund analyst roles, and there's 130 fund analysts, global fund analyst jobs at risk uh, since uh, a few weeks ago when they made the announcement, because all that can be done by machines. So, so we've got incredible changes coming, haven't we, that and very exciting things because things can be done more efficiently and in theory if we had a society that worked really well everybody is better off there's more more availability but there's going to be massive changes yeah. for many people perhaps yeah. faster than we've ever seen before and yeah they're going to need help and support through those changes so it sounds as if life planning is, is a, a great thing for some of the people but of course we've got to not do it that's quite a crisis. We need to do it as soon as possible because it's coming, I guess. Yeah. So what the way I do it is uh, it needs to be scalable, as you say, John. Uh, the trouble with, uh, again, regulated financial advice is one-on-one. -on -one. It's uh, you, you kind of get a person's suit to uh, personal details. You make a personal recommendation of a product, uh, and that takes 15 hours, and uh, you can only see 60 to 100 clients a year. 
And then when you see, if you're going to see them next year, then you can't take on any more clients. So you've reached your capacity. So you can never, so that's why they pick people with hundred thousand pounds of investments or more, because they just want a hundred clients with hundred thousand pounds each. And that'd be great. You know, that's their business. Um, but it's, that's as far as they can go. So that's why 95% of the population have been disintermediated and they don't have access to this. Now, if you take away the personal recommendation, you give people general advice instead and say, well, if you want an investment that, you know, that it's been commoditized, the financial conduct authority say you can get readily access to low cost, well diversified funds on these platforms. It's all commoditized and you can do that at zero cost, initial cost and that sort of thing. You can do that now. And I sh I'll show you how to do that if you want in a class. Mm. It'll take, me take you 15 seconds to do. So that's what I'll show you. Um, and then we- really, Yeah, it sounds really good that what Vanguard are doing in terms of removing the need for expensive commissions and financial advice but obviously i think presumably you're talking to people like that to say yes but make sure you don't get rid of the planning that goes with it and the human elements yeah because that's actually more dangerous that's right so uh, what happens if you take away the planning hand holding altogether then people get scammed and the other the other thing I do is I run I help people who are victims of scams get their money back. And uh, the scam scale of scamming in the UK is absolutely astronomical. According to the National Crime Agency, uh, in a year, one hundred and ninety billion pounds of the money gets scammed out of the public. And if you put that into context, the uh, bill for the NHS is one hundred ninety six billion. Wow. So it's the whole they're getting better all the time as well. I mean, I got a text message saying your parcel's ready to collect. Yeah, you, from Royal I'm, Mail and, and you I'm, get it. I'm really good at computers yeah. and it, I, I actually clicked on it and looked at it and it was a few seconds before that it's like, this doesn't feel right, but I'm an expert in software. That's right, yeah. And, it, and just two days later, there was a story on the news that I think somebody connected with Royal Mail or something, I can't remember exactly what it was, but they'd lost several thousand pounds. Yeah. So we've got to work even harder to look after people and their money, haven't we, to try Well, it happened to me, John, you know, two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's me, you know, I'm a kind of chief executive of a company that helps victims of scams and they scammed me at 10,000 uh, pounds. They said they were BT, said my IP address had been altered and I had mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, give them access to my computer for them to fix it. And would I go out the room, you know, <laughs> with my mobile phone or something? So anyway, they managed to take ten thousand pounds out of my account, but I have I managed to get it back. What's mm -hmm. happened now? The banks are starting to welsh on their promise to help people get people give people the money back, and people are getting scammed and not getting the money back from the bank. Mm -hmm. So it's just there's a total of something like not not point two percent is ever recovered. Wow, that's but, scary. 0.02% is the amount of the amount scammed is the amount the government spends on anti-scam measures in the UK. 0.02%. So it's like ridiculous, you know, it's just absolutely ridiculous. So the MPs are kind of going mad at the moment about that. But it's, um, so the point I was coming to <laughs> is that when you take away the personal recommendation, something magical happens. I can now run a class. I can now run, do financial education. I can have 10 people in the room and charge them a tenth of the price. So I could, you know, charge 100 people in the room and charge them a hundredth of the price. I get the same money, mm. uh, but people get the same benefit. And suddenly, you know, instead of paying 1500, you could go on a, uh, a webinar, web class or something, 150 pounds and learn the same stuff. But you're in a group of 10 people. And of or course, if, if somebody's situation personally is more complicated than the basic advice, they can come to to you for more detailed help or the game yeah. plan or so how, how would they come to you or one of your yeah so what they would do is uh, so what happened is obviously i've been doing this for 10 years and what happened is when we when the covid pandemic hit last year i had uh, my personal clients cancelled their appointments <laughs> so they said <coughs> Uh, we don't know what the future holds, so we're going to just like hang fire on this for a moment, Steve, you know, just on the plans. But well, what, what am I going to do? I thought, well, one of the things I do is I show other advisors how to be advisors, you know, show the planners how to be trusted planners and we'll do the game plan and do that. And, you know, some of them have been vote, voted by the Times as the best top 250 planners in the country. So I'd already achieved that fame with some of the people I'd shown, but I'd done it not as a business. I'd just done it as a favor. 
<laughs> so I thought, well, perhaps I'll spend the time, you know, we're all on Zoom calls now. Let's let's set up a training program and I'll train people how to do the game plan. So that's what I started. And uh, 12 months on, I now have uh, dozens of advisors. I have uh, 32 firms that uh, mm -hmm. are now members of the Academy of Life Planning. Half of them in the UK have firms. And, and are they all people that used to be financial advisors or could somebody come in from a completely different direction? Yeah, so it's both angles. So I've got every, the full spectrum, John. So I've got uh, people who've fed up of being a regulated advisor, sold the business and decided to be a, a non-regulated, non-intermediating financial planner where they can be uh, a, like a, a financial lifeguard for their clients rather than selling them products. Uh, so I've got those and I've got people who've never done it before <clears throat> who'd like to be a coach, life coach, financial coach. And they've come out from that side. I just give them a business in a box. There's no intellectual property on it. Because one of the things that really miffed me about the marketplace, you get all these gurus who are running courses. And, you know, I, you know like, I won't make mention of names, no, no. well-known names. But what they're doing is they say, you know, like how to get rich. And they run this course, and it's three grand a ticket, and there's 50 of you or 100 of you in the, on the course. And of course, how you get rich is you spend, you know, you put a course on and you charge three grand a ticket and get 100 people on. <laughs> so they kind of, it's kind of self fulfilling prophecy. So, but, you know, so there's a lot of false, you know, snake oil salesmen in this marketplace. What I wanted to do is pull something, put something in the market for, you know, fifty pound an hour, an hourly rate, fifty pounds. Typically, advice charges three times that, and I wanted to offer some one-to-one -one support for my advisors at that sort of affordable prices. What they'd pay for a, a subscription to some program, you know, they get one-to-one -one mentorship with me. So I wanted to deliver that. So I work one-to-one -one with every every everyone's got a different business, John. But what they get is a business in the box, and they can design it. And, but what they get is a process, the game plan, where they plan the client before they plan the money, where they look at this, do this soul work, you know, the uh, pierce in the veil, understanding the values and talents of the client and their hero's journey, understanding about the client before they begin, just so that they know they're pointing in the right direction. Then we put the life plan in place, then put the financial place, and put the business plan in place. It's all lined up and moving the client along their path of purpose. Uh, and that's the, using the ikigai, it's a, that's the path that takes them to their greatest potential because it's what they're good at, what the world needs. This is the really exciting thing for me is that if we get this right, I, I've heard of this thing called compound interest. Yeah. <laughs> how scary it is or how good it is. Yeah. And, and it, from, from a very simple way of saying it that works for me is that if we get our money right and we put it in the right places, that compound interest is going to make a massive difference to us, not just in a few thousand pounds, but you could measure it in, in years of our life. So if, if I've got two young sons, I'm trying to have conversations with them, talk about pensions and, and that kind of stuff. So the sooner people come to you and get that life plan, uh, game plan right, it's going to make a bigger difference on their lives. Absolutely. Uh, and there's something else I wanted to tell you about compound interest. So Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, said that rich don't get rich by working. They get rich by creating assets. And I agree. You know, what, what I want people who haven't got wealth to do is create wealth and create an asset. And it wants it to produce income. But let me give you this idea, John. Imagine if that asset is intergenerational. So you in your lifetime can create something. But then when, you, when you're done, you've you know, taken your bit out of it, it can then be passed on and uh, then can be passed on. And what you get is, it doesn't have to be a very big something to begin with, but due to compound interest, when you pass that on, it's gonna be massive. So one of my clients was uh, looked at, he calls it the miracle of compound interest, because that was, uh, you know, that, that's what, what it's referred to. Um, and if you, uh, and he worked out that he, he needed just to put kind of a small sum away now for his kids. And uh, when he went, and if they passed it, you know, by the time they got to be adults, it'd be a phenomenal sum. You know, it was something like if he put, say, uh, 20,000 pounds aside, then um, by the time they got to 50s and 60s, the kids, something, mm. then that would be, you know, 
a big sum where they could be making a big difference to 20 charities, you know, giving them 200,000 pounds each or something. Wow. It's an amazing difference. And he wanted, that's what he wanted. That was his, uh, that was his next step, John. When you uh, have financial freedom, so you've got financial security is the first step. Financial freedom is the second. The third step is called legacy. Um, it's making the world a better place. Not to say you've got some interference coming through from somewhere. Oh, have I? He's touching my... something or... It might be me touching my... That's uh, it. It's, it's fine now. Is it? <laughs> yeah. So I was talking about legacy. And basically, if you, you know, use the miracle compound interest, think about intergenerational wealth. Think about creating a business, for example, that then you're, uh, if they were interested, you know, your family could get involved in, they could become an income producing asset for them and their kids and their kids, you know. So, and the miracle of compound interest just makes it grow and grow and grow. So it's fascinating compound interest. Okay. We're definitely living in interesting times, aren't we? That lots of people are going to be freed up, shall we say? Jobs are changing, and this, uh, but we've got these incredible opportunities that if we get it right, because these platforms are automated, we're not going to be paying commission. You're going to help them with their life plans. Things can be very different in, in a few years' time. Now, I know that you've also got a tool. I have, yes. That might help with this process. Yeah, so what happens at the moment, if you think about the advisors and they're gathering their assets under management and they're very precious and they hold on to the client data. So I say, you can't leave us because we've got all your data. Mm -hmm. And if you go to someone else, then they'll have to get all your data. You have to go through all the price all over again. Uh, well, the principle, what's happening, there's a movement in the world, John, which is about uh, GDPR. The, um, so it's the, about the data ownership being passed to consumers and people being in control of their own lives. And let's not let these big organizations control us with this ownership of data. Let us have the data ourselves. So I thought, well, that'd be great. You know, the uh, cash flow modeling that we use in the life planning and the financial planning. Um, let's let's give that to the consumer. Let that them own that. So we went around to the different um, cash flow modeler providers, and they said, "No, no, that's the way we make our money. We 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 give this to the advisor, and they give us their money, a, a percentage of the assets under management. They they asset rate these assets, and we get a percentage of that. So we're on a percentage as well." So they said, "No." So basically, I, then I found a, a company that would thought like me on the same page well let's go give data ownership to the consumers so what we've done is we're launching HapNav, the happiness navigator uh, which is a consumer centered uh financial planning kit so all the kit the advisor has let's give that to the consumer in a really simple way that's really dead easy to understand that they can control the data they can decide who they give the data to and not and they in control and if they get fed up with their advisor they can change and it doesn't cost them anything it's just uh, it's, so it's uh, portable from advisor to advisor. And uh, what also is magic is that I can now run a group of 10 people, 20 people, 30 people. Instead of me trying to enter 30 pieces of data into a, a cash flow model or all the same time, which is impossible, they all do it. In fact, I don't even need to know what they've, what they've entered. I'll just say, whatever you've entered, has it come up red or, or black? Because <laughs> yeah. if it's come up red, then you, we need to deploy a wealth creation strategy. Let me tell you about the business plan of you and how to do it and how to put that in. If it's come up black, then you've got wealth. And let me tell you about the direct-to-consumer platforms that you can go to and set something up in 15 seconds instead of 15 hours for free instead of £1,500. And let me educate you on how to do that and make a right choice, that sort of thing. So it completely changes the way we work and the way people work so that, just, that's yeah it's just bringing a memory back to me that it's just come back from lots of years ago i have i haven't dealt with financial advisors very much but i do feel remember a feeling it must have been 30 years ago even of talking to somebody and feeling that i didn't have any control you were literally throwing the information over to them you don't know what they're doing you don't know it's so this sounds like a revolution that we're actually going to help people to understand their own money. Yes. We're going to help them take control. And I mean, it's really radical. And of course, in terms of protecting our data, that's a very big topic at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, with Facebook and the, all the other big organizations that they're using our data to make them more money. So yes. this is turning that around. Yes, so we, we've seen uh, the idea that I don't know if you've seen it where people can actually use their own data to uh, make an income. I don't know if you've seen it where they can actually uh, volunteer to allow 
uh, advertisers to um, access their data. And if the, if the but the advertiser has to pay the customer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so so they advertise that. Yeah. if you want to. Yeah, yeah. And if, exactly. with our web platform, the potentialization web system that's coming along, it's 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 a fundamental principle. We will protect their data. We're not going to sell people data. It's about empowering people. So I think yeah. you know, it, it's, there's an incredible synergy between what we're doing. It's really exciting. Yeah. Just, so do they come to the Association of Life Planning to find out about that now? Or? So, yes. Yeah, so uh, the, uh, the Academy of Life Planning has uh, access to HapNav. We've also got a website, hapnav.com. So it's like SatNav, but HapNav, and it stands for Happiness Navigator, HapNav.com. So that site's live now. Uh, we're just about to go live with the actual system and make it available. And it's, uh, we, so I'll give you an idea, you know, you're paying thousands of pounds to financial advisors and advisors, they're, they're going to be wanting a few hundred pounds a month from you for that. So we're making HapNav available to the public for five pounds per month plus fat. So it's six pounds a month in total. So, so it's like really radical pricing again. It's a bit like uh, it's a bit like the Vanguard thing, you know. It's uh, but for just a few pounds, you get all the tools. You can cut out that middleman who's kind of taking all that money off you. But that's um, a major change. And if I went on to hapnav.com, will it help me find one of your life plans as well? Uh, so Academy of Life Planner, uh, Academy of Life Planning. Um, I'm starting to build up a, a you know, the, a list of these uh, members of the Academy. So there's an accreditation program. People have been signed off as completed the game plan training. And uh, we've got dozens now of ones who've completed the program. Uh, they are in the United, United Kingdom. They're across Europe. We've got them in France, uh, Sweden, Germany, um, the uh, in uh, Czech Republic, we've got them in India. Uh, so unfortunately, that we've got a bit of a problem at the moment going on in India. So it's uh, we are actually rolling out Academy Life Planning in India, but that's all on hold at the moment while they're dealing with the problems that they're dealing with. And we're also in the Far East, in uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, mm -hmm. where it's like what we call expat land, which is like the cowboy land of financial services, and we're really shaking that up with this model this fixed fee model of, of advisors that act for your interests instead of their own or so it's uh yeah so it's a global thing uh you can have regulated advisors about 40 percent are regulated 60 percent are unregulated um you when you're regulated that means that you uh recommend products so what the regulated advisors do they have a separate business that just does the fixed fee financial planning that's not about products if you want a product then you can go to the other part of the business and do a product with them uh, but that's disappearing fast because of what vanguard have just done yeah. um so you know so and i've just noticed what time it is and i've asked you too many questions all right but we've, we've got I want 10, questions. 10 minutes left before the end uh we, we've got a few people here and i wonder if they might want to ask any questions at all i'll just allow everybody to unmute uh, if anybody's got any particular questions not necessarily i know we've covered so much but yeah, uh, i assume you want to ask a question at all hi no i I'm just found it really interesting and lots of information coming out there so i haven't got any questions i think you've answered everything all right <laughs> that's good yeah uh, we just have to talk a lot <laughs> so the same for me, Steve, because I'm I'm absolutely rubbish at planning anything. Um, we're quite interested in the game plan. Yeah, the game plan. Like has. Yeah, so there's uh, there's some free guides on the website academylifeplanning.com. Nice. So if you go on there, there's a, a page called downloads, and you can actually download for free an explanation of what the game plan is and how to do it and some exercises. So the exercise that I said about what your values and what your talents and that bit, you, there's a actual exercise book. You can go on and do it. If you can't remember Academy of Life Planning. I think I'll, I'll remember that. It's just like, as I said, I'm quite well, it's, it's it's also one is AOLP.co.uk. Right. Okay. <laughs> that, Thanks for that. This has been really interesting because not, not being a fan of banks or anything else, right? And, I'm, and I was thinking because I don't have any kids, or anything, anybody to leave anything to. I'm trying to set up something that would leave something behind for 
to create so like different yeah, things a legacy that's the legacy plan yeah 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 um but i'm in a weird position at the moment like it's just all up in the air <laughs> it's just all up in the it's air. good time to do the game plan if you're all up in the air because you're at a crossroads you see and you don't know what the next step is and the bit I was just talking to John about is help you see, well, actually, what, what direction should I be pointing in? What is the next step? So the game plan actually helps you know what the next step is. And it's because it's just a continuation of what, what your life's been up to this point. And it's, it's saying, ask you what, what is important to you, what, what you're good at. Your next step is going to be what you're good at, what you love, what the world needs and what you get paid for. <laughs> that's your yeah. next step. And that's that. Yeah. The game plan and that exercise, it's called eight steps to your plan B. Right. Uh, and it's a free to download exercise on there. And it, all you get, all you have to do to do it is it signs you up to my mailing list. So you right. can, if you don't want my mail, just unregister. <laughs> right. Okay. But it's there. That's the only thing that happens. And you just get newsletters and stuff until you uh, do it otherwise. But that's that might help. Well, um, well yeah, just, you're right to that, thanks. Go on, John, yeah. It's just reminded me, because I spoke to you quite a few years ago about quite a lot of this. Mm -hmm. And it's taken me quite a while. But as of about six months ago, I think I am really am following what I want to do, which yeah. is merge, bringing together the software skills, but also that passion for enabling people to reach their potential. Uh, so I need to get on and build that platform. Now, I hope people will uh, pay for some of the things. Our, our basic service is free to help people improve yeah. themselves, but there'll be the other bits of services for coaches or whoever it might be that I, I'm hoping will actually make a system that grows and helps a lot of people and yeah. that refers a lot of people to you as well because we, we need this. It's an important part of having people do what they want to do with their lives. Yeah, I mean, if you think about what you've just done, uh, you've kind of helped discover your own potential and using your talents which is your knowledge of uh, t software engineering and technology and your knowledge of uh, uh, psych psychology and that it's all kind of come into one thing and if you think about your journey we call it the hero's journey it's coming three parts who you were your journey and now the success and uh, your talent is that those things and your purpose in life is to use your purpose to, to help other people so what you're doing now is you're fulfilling your life purpose because you're now helping people fulfill their potential using technology and psychology and <laughs> all the things that you've done in your life so that's the idea of the game plan let's let's kind of find out what about our lives know ourselves and then knowing that and knowing what what we're good at then use that to help other people on that same thing and, yeah, and uh, i think a really telling thing is that you would I don't know the exact numbers, but you hear lots of surveys of people at work and who want, likes the job and who doesn't. And it's, I think, I'm pretty certain it's more than 50% of people would like to change their jobs. It is. It's, what, it's over one in two <laughs> as a result of COVID. One in two, yeah. According to the research, one in, uh, uh, people who use lockdown say, actually, I don't want to go back to that. <laughs> mm. I, don't, I don't want to go back to the commute, you know, uh, kind of two hours each way or whatever it is I, I, I wasn't actually happy you know and it stopping the hamster wheel it kind of made me think and reflect and think well actually do I want to do that and I didn't love it I wasn't good at it <laughs> you could, I wasn't getting paid for it. it wasn't what the world needed you know do something else with the time so let's do that it is actually a better strategy because it'll it'll bring wealth to you in every area of your life not just your bank account quicker it's the optimum strategy for creating wealth, mental well-being. You know, it's work that doesn't feel like work. You know, people ask me about retirement to say, no, find your icky guy. Because in, in Okinawa, where they live to the 100, you've got ladies in the 90s and they're still playing sports and stuff and, and actually very good at it. And they've got three jobs and they're in, the, you know, they retire at 104, I think, or something, 105 <laughs> or something like that. And that <laughs> I'm only halfway there now, so far. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Joanne Lumley did a documentary on it. So if you ever see Joanna Lumley's documentary on Okinawa, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's always worth looking at because you'll see these amazing old ladies in the 90s and old gentlemen as well. And it's the longest, uh, highest longevity on the planet. People have, And they, they do it by just having purpose, which is their guy, and having social circles because social bubbles. Uh, that's, you know, the quickest way to kind of um, have a short life in retirement is not to have a social connection with people you know the kind of uh, isolation through COVID and that is causing devastation 
for people and loneliness and things yeah you know you know steve right before the lockdown i planned all these arts and crafts dropping groups because i've noticed um everyone was getting more isolated than that and it was all about combat in isolation then two weeks in it was like everything got shut down and everyone got the whole world got flung into isolation i was like what the hell my time is just really awful <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it. You've got to get your timing right. You know, that's that's the, that's what the world wants. You work out what the world the world wants social bubbles. You know, so you, what your idea is is now come its time, and I think you should go back in now as we're kind of clawing our way out of lockdown with the social bubble concept because mm-hmm. people have been you know mentally stressed, emotionally stressed through lack of what it is that you're creating. So it's a very very good time now. So it's a positive thing now. It's a, what we call a a, a positive market driver right now to launch that business because that's exactly what the world needs and, and that reminds me of something we want to build on the platform that if we get enough people on the platform over the last 50 years generally we've lost extended families social mobility has been good people can move house get better jobs but it really has destroyed local communities and extended families so one of the things i would really love to do on the platform is it's not just online. It will put you in touch with other local people that they might not be immediately next door to you, but there's going to be people just up the road with similar interests yeah. that you will never get to talk to otherwise. So we've got to bring back real communities. I think that's one of the a really important part of being human, I guess. Definitely. One of the questions I ask in uh, one of the exercises, which is also free to download, <laughs> which is called Eight, Eight Steps to Your Success. Uh, the, uh, there's a question about uh, stakeholders so you you think about what your idea is and the stakeholders are not just your customers not just your staff not just your suppliers or your competitors it's also your communities and what is it that you can do that's going to be of great value to the community because a business that does that is going to be so much more successful than a business that doesn't it's going to be so much more popular uh, well received well supported if you want grants from the local authority uh, they're going to lend. So, for example, one of my clients recently, uh, this uh, last year it was, just about, or it might be beginning of this year, uh, received funding of £4 million from the local authority for Build Back Better campaign because what we're doing is creating a, a centre in Manchester where which helps not in ed- education employment teams or displaced people who these people we're talking about in the jobs where... That they, they, they were remote and now they're displaced. Mm. Uh, we give them retraining in STEM subjects at this centre in Manchester, and uh, we were aiming to get 5,000 people through that programme. And, uh, you know, if you've got a message like that, then you can get funding. And so just, just think about it. What, what am I doing that has a positive impact on community? And, uh, you know, I'll help you with the, the business plan of you uh, to put that proposal together that goes to the local authority that gets you funding. And, and it recently it just did that in Manchester. And we got funding of four million pounds for that project. So it's, these are templates. And, so, you know, so you can begin by just doing the free ones. And if you need any support, it's not overly expensive to do the game plan. Mm-hmm. It's uh, and and if you join a group, it's a tenth of the price. And if you do hat now, if it's a hundredth of the price, yeah. so so it's like can't can't lose really with it. But uh, there, it's there are lots, yeah, lots of ways to of opportunities and and ways to make the world better and yeah. feel fulfilled at the same time. We, we've done an hour. Yeah, but I don't want to shut us off with a hard finish. If anybody's got any last burning question before we close. John, I've got one. It's Andrew Kent here. Really interesting. Hi, really interesting uh, presentation, Steve. Thank you. The, the, the game plan as such, does, how often do you need to evaluate it? Is it is an evaluation when you come, when, you know, to quote the conversation, things are up in the air? Because a plan's a plan, but often life events don't allow you to follow your plan. Yeah. So I'm just wondering how often, yeah, how often do I do it? So there's two. And do we view it? Is there a set time? <clears throat> yeah, so there's two things. There's a, the, it's a project. <clears throat> so the game plan is a, basically a three month project. You kind of do it's, it's, uh, six two hour sessions uh, on a one to one basis. You can also do this in groups. Like I say, 10 of you share the cost of 10. Uh, sorry, I'm banging my microphone again there, John. <laughs> 
<laughs> static. Uh, so you could do that. It's a one-off thing. And then what I do is you could do the HAP nav, which is the five pound a month thing, which keeps you in touch with the program. You can keep evaluating it. Now, what's going to happen is that life is going to change or your finances are going to change. And what happens is typically your money might change more often. But if you've got your own navigator, you kind of can monitor that. So you don't need to be paying for somebody to redo your game plan. Uh, but what I find is that people come back and they say, you know, the following year, they say, something's changed. Could you kind of redo my game plan? So I had uh, a lady who had it was an accountant in London and she was day in, day out doing the same job. She was, you know, suicidal. There's a video on the uh, website about it. Uh, I, I'm not I'm laughing at the suicidal thing. I'm laughing about what happened next because she's, uh, she was an accountant, but she also was a psychic. And uh, what we did is we brought together the Nikki guy who was actually to make her a psychic accountant. And uh, what she is now is she's living in Hollywood. Uh, she's a she does uh, readings for the stars and things and living on the beach there and uh, you know that was a great plan she's well done Steve you changed my life you know I was quite depressed and uh, a very very bad place and now I'm living in Hollywood very very happy but I've met someone <laughs> which could you do a game plan for me and my husband please because I'd like our lives to be knit, knitted together and because we do it as couples and if you're in a couple and then knit together the two lives to make a common uh, game plan so that's what I did so uh, basically what I'm saying is uh, you do a one-off thing uh, project uh, then you just can tick along tracking your money with HapNav and then if you have a life event you can do it again because the, the game plan is actually a cycle it's called the ancient natural cycle from creation to manifestation it's uh, based on the four seasons and it works like the uh, weather and the the seasons thing and it's something you repeat and repeat and you just get better and better and if you get better by one percent each time you do it then compound interest means that you'd be brilliant <laughs> right, uh, in later mm -hmm. life so mm -hmm. that's yeah so it, it's the way that's the way it does it i like it that way because uh this uh in the financial planning and financial services market they take one percent off you every year year in year out even though they don't have anything to do until you retire so the uh, it's called lazy income or fee for no service in australia they call it the fee for no service scandal and uh, the banks bankers have been threatened with imprisonment for doing it because they've been taking tens of thousands of pounds off people every year not doing any service and we've got that mass scale in the uk at the moment i'm trying to get something done about that but i don't like that model where people just take money and don't do anything for you you know in mm -hmm. other markets it's called robbery and uh but in banking apparently it's allowed to be done so <laughs> uh, so i don't like that model but i like the model where you just pay five or a month just to monitor your money and then come back to me if your life circumstances change or go back to one of the other members and, and do it again so now, now we know that the financial system uh, some of them are not exactly got our best interests at heart i, I really would just love to just to say thank you very much for all everything we've done this evening and I know you're making a big difference to a lot of people's lives. So, and hopefully we'll, we'll put this on YouTube. So if everybody's happy, it's all recorded. Uh, if you've said anything, let us know if you've got any issue with that. And hopefully we'll have hundreds of people watching this video over the next few years and coming to you for more life planning. So thank you very much. Really thank enjoyed you. that. Thank you. It's been yeah. a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank, thank you, you, Steve. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Take care now. Bye. Bye. Bye.